Good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Matt, and uh, I'm gonna be preaching today on God's promises to his children. Now, if you're a child watching this, go ahead and say, woohoo! Hopefully there's some kids watching this. Now, everybody should have said woohoo because everybody is a child of God. Now, we may be adults, but we never outgrow being a child of God. Our Heavenly Father is our Father, and for our whole lives here and on into eternity, we're gonna be his children. But there are some of us who are kiddos, little kids, in our father and mother's house. And some of this I'm gonna be talking directly to you. Now, the Apostle Paul, he did this in his letters to the Ephesians and the Colossians. He would give commands and directions to the children. He would address the mothers and the fathers. He would uh, address some of it to everybody. And so I'm gonna be addressing some of this to you kids. And I hope that you understand what God wants you to do and how you can receive from God his amazing promises that he has made for you as children, but also for all of us as God's children. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to start with a story have you ever lost something in your life? If you're a kid, have you ever lost your favorite toy? My son, uh, his name is Jake, he once lost this little green turtle that he loved and we could not find it. I mean, we searched in the garage, in the car, under the beds, in the laundry. I mean, we looked everywhere and we couldn't find this turtle. Have you ever lost something like that? Oh, it's so difficult. And he loved to sleep with this turtle and so that made it difficult. Well, after a couple days, we realized we hadn't prayed and asked God, where's the turtle? And of course, God knows where the turtle's at. So we prayed, Lord, would you please show us where the turtle is? And he did. Just really about half an hour later, we found the turtle. It was great. God was teaching me something as well as my children. God often teaches us stuff like that. Sometimes we go through hard things and God is using those hard things to teach us to talk to him, to trust him, to call to him so that he can show us how much he loves us, how close he is to us, how he wants to be right there in the middle of our lives. God is great like that. Now, I asked you, have you ever lost anything? And the reason why I asked that is one time, Jesus' mother, Mary, and his adopted father, Joseph, well, they lost Jesus. That's right, they didn't lose a turtle, they didn't lose their keys, they lost Jesus, the Son of God. Where's Jesus, can you imagine? Now the story goes, and you can read it in Luke 2, I'm gonna summarize it, but the story goes that Jesus' family was going to Jerusalem, which was the capital city of their nation, for a big party called Passover. And all the Jews did this every single year. They went to Jerusalem and they had a big party, a week-long party called Passover. And Jesus' family went down from Nazareth to go to the party too. Well, after the party, they went back home with all their friends and all their families. Everybody piled back into the vans and the cars and they were all driving back up to Nazareth. And then they realized Jesus isn't here, right? They pulled over for dinner someplace at a Denny's. Everybody sat around the table. They were ordering some dinner and Jesus wasn't there. Oh, can you imagine that? Can you imagine how they felt? We've lost Jesus. I thought you had him. No, I thought you had him. I thought he was in a sleepover with his brother. No, Jesus is gone. So they searched amongst all the company. They couldn't find him. And then they went back to Jerusalem. Three days later, they found him. Now parents, this is what we call a parenting fail. So if you ever get discouraged about being a parent, remember, even the mother and father of Jesus mess it up every once in a while. So they find Jesus in the temple. And he's sitting in front of the teachers and he's asking questions. Everybody's amazed at his understanding and how great the questions are he's asking. And when Mary finds him, she is, she's both angry and sad and stressed out. And she says to him, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic. We've been looking for you, searching for you everywhere. And Jesus said, well, didn't you know I'd have to be in my father's house? Well, after this, it says something very interesting about Jesus, right? The Lord Jesus Christ, the savior of the human race. Here's what it says about Jesus. And by the way, at this time, Jesus is 12 years old. Did you know that Jesus was 12 years old? That Jesus was once five, that he was nine, that he was 13, 17, 20? Jesus is just like you. He was born a baby and he grew all the way up into adulthood. So no matter what age you are as a child, Jesus knows what it's like to be you and he loves you, and he can help you if you'll talk to him, if you'll ask him. Anyway, 12-year-old Jesus, found in the temple by his parents, whew, we found him, it says this about him. He went back with his parents and became obedient to them. He went back with his parents and he became obedient to them. Now, why would Jesus have to be obedient to his parents? Why would Jesus have to be obedient? It's Jesus, right? Well, the reason why Jesus was obedient to his parents is because this is what God the Father wants for all of his children. He wants his little kids to be obedient to their parents. And this is a word from God to you kids. This is from Ephesians chapter six. It says this, children, and again, if you're a child, go woohoo! Children, 
Obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. If you belong to the Lord Jesus, obey your parents, for this is right. It's the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. Do you want things to go well with you? Do you want to receive from God all the blessings and good things that only God can give you? Do you want that? If you want that, raise your hand. I want that. Do you want to have a long life? A life of security and peace and purpose and strength? Do you want to, do you want to have the very best that God has to give you across your whole life? I want that. Well, these promises are being made, not just to your parents, the adults, but to you children. This command has a promise. In fact, in the 10 commandments that God gave Moses, this is the only commandment that has a promise. And that promise is being made to you kids, to children. God says he'll do two things for his children who obey their parents. One, he says that it may go well with you. All the good things, all the best things that only God can give, all the things that the world is chasing after but they can't get, God will give and pour into your life over time as right now you learn to trust and obey your parents. The second thing God promises to you kids is that it may, you may live a long life in the land. You wanna live a long life on this earth? I hope you do. God wants you to. And this again is a gift that he gives to his obedient children. So obey your parents because the Lord Jesus obeyed his parents. And when you obey your parents, you're honoring the Lord Jesus. This is how you show your faith in God. You don't have a job yet, you're a kid. You're not married yet, you're a kid. You don't have kids, you're a kid. There's a lot of things that I have to do as an adult to trust and obey the Lord, ways I get to trust and obey the Lord that you haven't yet had a chance to do. But you will in time. But right now, there is a way that you can show your faith in Jesus. What you do is you obey your parents. Now. If you're a child, the way you obey your parents is three things. Right away, all the way, in a cheerful way. Right away, all the way, in a cheerful way. Right away. That means if your mother or father said, hey, turn off the video games, please go clean your room. You put the video games down and you go right away to it. You don't delay. You don't say, no, not yet, mom, I'm one more level. You don't ignore them and keep quiet. You don't pretend like you didn't hear them. Come on, I know you've done that before. I've done that before. No, you put it down and you say, okay, mom, okay, dad. I heard you and you go right away to whatever it is they're asking you to do. You do it all the way, all the way. So if they say go clean your room, you don't go in your room and you know, put the pillow on the bed and put some shoes away and look around and say, all right, I'm done, and then come back and play video games. No, 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 you do it all the way, the way that your parents want you to do it. And most of us know what all the way looks like. And if you don't know what all the way looks like, if you don't know what your mom and dad want you to do when you show up in your bedroom, you can go ask them, what, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to clean it? But once they show you what that means, you know, fix the bed, put the pillows right, put the, the dolls in the right place, put your shoes away, whatever it is, put your toys away. Once you know what your parents want, you do it all the way. And finally, you do it in a cheerful way, a cheerful way. You're not angry, so, oh, all right, fine. Oh, you always make me do this. You don't complain, you don't throw a fit, you don't get angry, but you do it in a cheerful way. Okay, dad, okay, mom, you bet. And then after you've done it all the way, you come back and say, I finished. Now that is how you obey your parents like the Lord Jesus obeyed his parents. That's the kind of obedience that God wants you to have. You don't complain, you don't argue, you don't fight, but instead all the way, cheerful way, right away. Now, what about if you're a, you know, I don't know, a teenager? Well, if you're a teenager, you're moving from uh, childhood into adulthood. And that means that, hey, guess what? You get choices. God is gonna give you more choices. Your parents are gonna give you more freedom. You're gonna have more decisions to make. And that's all good. Your mom and dad, they don't want you just coming back to them every single day when you're 16, 17 saying, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? They want you to begin to make good decisions according to what God has taught you in the scriptures, according to their example, according to what your mom and dad have instructed you. Now, when you're a teenager, what you must do is what it says in Ephesians 6, one through three. Honor your father and mother. And the way that you honor your mom and dad when you're at school away from them, when you're at Knott's Berry Farm away from them, when you're with your friends, when you're someplace else and your parents aren't there, how do you honor your mother and father? How do you honor them? By one, you remember their instructions, you imitate their example, and you do what is right before God. You honor them by doing what is right before God, 
by imitating their example and remembering their instructions. They want you to remember their teachings. They want you to store those up in their heart, in your heart, so that you can live the way that God has called you to live if you are a follower of Jesus. The second thing you can do if you're a teenager, since you're gonna have a lot of decisions to make, is be open and honest with your parents. Don't have a secret life, don't have a secret identity, don't keep secrets from your family, don't hide a part of your life. It's very tempting for teenagers. One of the ways the enemy, our enemy, tries to get us to turn away from our parents and tries to trap us in a dark place is through secrets and lies. When we have a secret life, when we have secret friends, when we have a secret identity that our parents don't know about because we're afraid, that's how our enemy traps us. That's how he puts us in chains. And so one of the ways you honor your father and mother is you're open and honest with your life. They know you, they know what's going on in your life. You talk to them regularly and you get their advice. Your mom and dad love you more than anybody else in this world. Your mom and dad, if you're a teenager, were the ones holding you in the middle of the night when you were one years old crying with a fever at three in the morning, having to get up the next day for work. They're spending time comforting and encouraging you. They're the ones who taught you how to ride your bike. They're the ones who have provided the food and the clothing and the love and the snuggles. They love you more than anyone else on this earth. And God has given them a special place. They know you better than anyone else. And they can advise you on the wise path. They can help you see the way God sees so that you'll do what God wants you to do so that you can enjoy the promises of God. So don't have a secret life. Seek their advice for every area of life. Mom and dad, here's a situation I'm facing. What do you think I should do? Would you help me understand why? Mom or dad, I'm thinking about going to this party or I'm thinking about getting this job or I'm considering joining this team or I have these new friends and I'm having this experience. And just talk to them about your life. And if they ask you questions about your life, don't say, good, yeah, it's right, it's good, yeah, it's fine. But, but share, share your life with them so that God can direct you through them. This is how you honor your mother and father in your teenage years. Now, I didn't do this. When I was a teenager, I had a girlfriend and my mom, I didn't ask her about it. And she didn't think it was a good idea, but I didn't want to ask. And my girlfriend, her mom, uh, she didn't think it was a good idea either, but she didn't ask. And it was a mess. Let me tell you what, it was so much pain and frustration. That relationship was like heartache wrapped in a train wreck, wrapped in a broken record. It was just the same heartache and the same conflict over and over and over again. And my parents, they could have spared me that pain, but I didn't want to ask. I had a private secret life that I didn't want them to have any input in, and I learned the hard way. What if I would have honored my mother and father? Oh, they could have saved me so much heartache. So do this. Open and honest lives before our parents in our teenage years. Getting their advice, this is how God directs us, and this is how we honor our mother and father. And then finally, if you're an adult, you may be thinking, well, I'm an adult, so do I obey my mother and father? Some of us, our mother and fathers have passed away. Some of us are mothers and fathers. What about us? Well, you honor your mother and father by taking care of them when they're old. So my dad is in his 70s. My, my wife's parents are in their 60s. And one of the ways that we honor our mother and father is by taking care of them when they're old, just like they took care of us when we were children. And one day our children will grow up and take care of us, and then their children will take care of them. And this is right in the Lord. This is God's design for the family, to take care of one another. So you honor your parents this way if you're an adult. Another way that you honor your parents is not by obeying what you're, you know, I'm 40, my dad's 76, and if my dad says, you need to do this, I'm commanding you. I don't honor my dad by obeying uh, my dad. Uh, it's, it doesn't work that same way. I honor my dad by obeying the Lord Jesus. As I obey the Lord Jesus, it brings honor to my father. It brings honor to my mother who, who passed away. And that's what my mother and father want. They want me to, to live an honorable life in obedience to the Lord Jesus. So I honor them as I obey the Lord Jesus. And this is what God wants for all of his children, okay? Now, the promises that God has made to us, we receive them through faith. And our faith as little kids, if you're a little kid, the way that you exercise your faith is by trusting and obeying your parents. And the way that you exercise your faith as a teenager is by obeying your parents in the areas where you still need to obey and getting their advice, being open and honest, getting their input in the areas where you have decisions, okay? Now, what if you're just a Christian uh, and you don't have any children? Is there anything here for you? Well, yes, of course. Uh, the scriptures are actually pretty clear about this. The same promises that God is making to the kids, he's making to all of us as Christians. So in Ephesians 6, it says children, and it's directed towards children. Honor your mother and father, obey your mother and father, right? This will bring a long life and a good life. That's the promise. But that same promise 
And that same command, God has given to all of his children, adults, children, uh, Christian parents, uh, Christians who don't have any kids, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We're all learning the same thing. So you see in the scriptures, in Deuteronomy 5, 33, this is what it says. You, speaking to all Christians, you shall walk in all the ways the Lord your God has commanded you. Right? Obey your heavenly Father's commands. You, so that you may live, and that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land that you shall possess. Those are the same two promises God made to the kids. So you see, all of us are learning this lesson. Parents, if you want your children to obey you, model for them how you obey the Lord. If you think it's easy to submit and obey, show them how. Show them, fathers, how you are submitted to the Lord Jesus in your household. Talk to your kids about decisions you're making, what God has said, and what you're going to do based on that, instead of what your heart wants or what your culture is telling you to do. Wives, obey the Lord. And one of the ways you obey the Lord is by submitting cheerfully to your husbands. When you do that, you're modeling for your children how they are to submit to the Lord Jesus, how they are to submit one day to their husbands, how they're supposed to submit to the pastors and teachers in the church, submitting to the government that God has established, submitting to their bosses. So as we obey and trust God, we're teaching our children how to obey and trust God. And if you're a parent and you're having some trouble with disobedience in your house, one of the humble things you can do right away is say, is God giving me a mirror? Is he teaching me something about my relationship with him as my father in the way that my children are relating to me as a father? If I see rebellion or stiff necked, uh, uh, stiff neckness with my kids, if they're, if they're resisting, if they're not wanting to obey, if they're starting to sneak around, I might ask myself, have I been doing this in my life? Maybe I'm doing it overtly and my kids are watching my example, or maybe I'm doing it secretly and I'm leaving spiritual doors unlocked. I can't be surprised when my children follow my spiritual example. And so one of the things God does for us who are his adult children with children is he uses the children as a mirror of our own relationship with him. So the first thing we should do when we see something in our kids that isn't good is ask the question, is God teaching me something about me? And then we confess, we repent, we turn back, we, we make it right with those that we need to. I recently had to ask for forgiveness from my son because I had not been a good dad and protected him. He had read something that was really not something he should have been reading. It caused him a bunch of fear and problems, but I wasn't being faithful to, to protect him and to make sure I'm paying attention to what he's reading. And so I had to say, listen, Jake, I'm sorry, but uh, I made a huge mistake as your dad. I didn't protect you. I, was, uh, I abdicated, I, I let go of my responsibility. This is my fault, would you forgive me? I confessed it to God. We renounced the things that had kind of come in and the relationship was restored. God was teaching me something there through my kids, through what my children were going through. So what I'm trying to say is, we're all learning to obey our father and mother. If you're a child, you're learning it. And if you're an adult, you're learning to obey the Lord Jesus and God the Father. Now, <clears throat> what if I don't obey? What if I disobey? Kids, if, you're, if your child, you're listening to this, you're thinking, yeah, but I, I had disobeyed God. So does that mean that because I disobeyed God, that I won't live long? Oh no, that I won't get the good things? Oh no, I better, I better obey. But then, but then you try real hard and you disobey again. What about that? Do I lose the promises of God when I disobey? Well, the answer is no. And the answer is yes. In some sense, it's, it's no. And in some sense, it's yes. Now this may be difficult to understand, but try to stay with me here. No, you don't lose the promises of God. And here's why. All the good things that God has promised to those who fear and obey him right? You fear and obey me, and here's all the good things I'm going to pour into your life. All those good things have been won by Jesus. Jesus perfectly obeyed God the Father. And so he got all those promises. They were given to him. All those good things are his now, and he can give them to his people, his children, to you. When you follow Jesus, his perfect life, he lived that for you. It's like you were the perfect child. You were the perfect teenager. You were the perfect adult. His perfect obedience to God the Father won him all those promises and rewards. And then he turns and he pours them out into our lives. So I don't have to be perfect to get the promises of God. But what I do need to do to receive from Jesus the promises that now he can give us is I have to receive them in faith. I receive them in faith. 
And I receive them by obeying, but I also receive them by doing what he says to do when I disobey. What does he tell you to do when you disobey? When you disobey, the way you deal with that sin is you confess it. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive me my sins and then purify me from all unrighteousness. So when I sin, I confess it, I agree with God, I say, this was wrong, please forgive me, Father, I know it's wrong and I'm, I'm gonna stop doing that. And then he forgives me and he purifies my life of these bad things. If you're a child and you've disobeyed your mother or father, or if you've mistreated your brother or sister, if you've sinned in some way, don't hide it, don't excuse it, just admit it. Mom, dad, I did this, this was wrong, please forgive me. And when they forgive you, right? When they forgive you, it's over, it's in the past, it's gone. It's, it's, it's not here anymore. And that's how God is. God is your father, he loves you, and he is never ever going to forsake you or kick you out of his family or stop being good to you because of what you do or don't do. I was adopted into my family. My mother and father, Sandy and Mike Sprinkle, adopted me when I was two. And if you're little, your parents can explain what adoption means. Well, they took me into their family. I got a new name, right? I got a new family and they loved me all my life. And no matter how good or bad I was, they never kicked me out of the family. And I was a bad little boy. So, oh my goodness, I, oh, I, was, I was really kind of a, a troublemaking kid. I remember one time we were water skiing at a, at a river and we were in the boat and I was screaming and yelling at my dad and being super disrespectful and he was trying to teach me how to water ski. And I was arguing and there were several people in the boat, my sisters and some family friends and my dad's like, stop. And I wouldn't stop. And he finally picked me up by the life jacket and he threw me out into the river and he drove away. <laughs> Now I was a really good swimmer and I had a life jacket and he came back and, you know, it, 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 is this an example of how crazy I can make my parents? I was not a good boy, but no matter how bad I was, my mom and dad never stopped loving me. They never stopped tucking me at night. They never stopped being good to me. And that's how our father is. Our relationship with God is secure because of what Jesus has done. But in another sense, yes, you can miss the promises of God because a lot of the promises of God are conditional. So if we don't choose to trust God, if we don't exercise faith, if we don't obey him, we can miss out on the good things that he has for us. Like one time when my dad was telling me, hey, if you'll, if you'll clean your room and you'll do this thing, then we're gonna go and see this movie that you wanna see. Well, I didn't clean my room and I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And we didn't get to see the movie. I was still his son. I didn't lose my station in the family. There were good things to come, but that specific opportunity, that promise was missed. And so we can miss the promises that God has for us when we refuse to stop sinning, turn around, and start obeying in faith. So what you do is you simply say, God, I have done wrong. I'm gonna start doing it your way. I'm gonna obey you in this way. And then that's it. Your sin is removed and God will be good to you. And there's plenty of life in which he can bless you in. We have to trust him, okay? So don't be discouraged if you disobey. God has budgeted for your disobedience. He has removed your sin because of what Jesus has done. He has provided you righteousness because of what Jesus has done. Jesus has won all the promises and he's pouring them out on his people, the church. And the way we receive them is by faithful trust and obedience. And when we sin, we confess, we turn around, we walk in obedience again, and we can trust the Lord Jesus to be good for us, to good to us and pour his blessings into our lives. So what should you do? What you should do in response to this word from God is one, you should ask the Lord Jesus to help you, help you obey. Obey your father, obey your mother and father on earth, your father in heaven. Jesus was two, he was five, he was nine and 14, he was 21. He, he has gone through all the situations that we find ourselves in and he can help you. So pray, Lord Jesus, would you show me the sin in my life? Will you show me where I'm disobeying you, where I'm disobeying my parents? Or you can ask, if you're a little kid, you can ask your mom and dad, have I been disobedient? Have I refused to obey you in some way? And then you just admit it. You say, that's true, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna obey you in this way. And then for all of us as Christians, when we read the word of God and we see what God wants, we should do it right away, all the way, and in a cheerful way. And when we do that, that honors the Lord, that pleases God, and God pours out his blessing that he's promised into our lives. We all belong to the Lord, young and old, and we're all learning to obey our Father like the Lord Jesus. So help each other so that all of us can prosper and live long on the earth. 
I hope this message has encouraged you. And if you're not yet a part of a community group at Church in the Valley, would you join one? You can sign up online right now. Our kickoff is in uh, the week of September 13th. If you're an adult, come join a community group because what we do is each week we gather together around the word of God, we pray for one another, we encourage one another, and then together we learn how to obey everything the Lord has commanded. And if you wanna learn how to obey everything the Lord Jesus has commanded, come join a community group. Come participate in worship on Sundays at Celebration Park. Join all the families in the church on the Lord's day as we gather together in the name of the Lord Jesus, under the word of God, to worship and praise God, to provide our offerings and gifts. Our children are taught and built up. We have fellowship with one another. Our faith is strengthened so that we can go out into the week and be the missionaries that God has created us to be. Come worship with us on Sunday at Celebration Park next week. Join a community group. And if you're new, I wanna encourage you to check out Church in the Valley and how you can get more involved by attending the Starting Line Dinner. You can get more information about that online or you can email me at matt at churchinthevalley.com. And the Starting Line Dinner is a first step you can take if you're new to Church in the Valley to, to learn about our church and to hear how you can get more involved. What are the steps that you can take to begin to grow in your relationship with God here at this church? So if you're new and you wanna be a part of CIV, I wanna encourage you to do that. Don't wait, don't pass it up. Make the time in your schedule. We'll provide childcare, we'll provide dinner, and it's going to be a really good thing in your growth and relationship to the Lord. So God bless you. I hope you've been encouraged. Trust and obey the Lord Jesus. Trust and obey your parents and experience the promised blessing that God has for all of his children.